What is good guys, it is Reed and welcome back to a super special video. Today we got my 2K sub special tutorial. This is something super close to my heart, one of my favorite effects that I've ever created, one of the best effects I've ever created. It gets such good reactions. It is called Mental Image. Now you guys may have seen me perform this before on the channel and been wondering how the heck that trick works. And today I'm going to share with you guys absolutely for free, just as a special thank you. I really appreciate all the support, you know, everything that you guys have done for myself and the channel and, and supporting and continuing to follow. I really appreciate that. So it's the least I can do is uh, give back with some of my, you know, favorite materials some stuff straight from my working repertoire. This trick is absolutely insane. Uh, in my opinion, one of the absolute best mind reading card tricks. It is truly a card that they create in their mind, a mental image that is never said out loud, and it is 100% surefire. You hit it every time. It uses some great little techniques borrowed from the mentalism world, along with some neat little card ideas and stuff like that to create an absolute killer of an effect. Now I do got to give some credit here. This is uh, based on a trick called Remember to Forget by Ryan Schultz that was taught for free on Vanishing Ink uh, a couple years ago and I remember seeing that and thinking it was a fantastic effect but I didn't like all the setup involved so I came up with an impromptu version of it and then from there I realized that we could take pretty much the whole thing and make it all mental and then you get away from the playing cards and make this really feel like a true feat of mentalism and then you could allow them to change the suit as well, which adds a little bit more layers into it. So my touches are, you know, allowing you to be able to change the suit and do this mentally and, and adding in the liar truth teller plot that you'll see later on. So I hope you guys enjoy this. This tutorial is going to be a super special one. I just cannot wait to teach this. But without any further ado, let's jump into a performance of Mental Image. Enjoy. All right, here's what you're going to do. You're going to call stop. You're going to see a card. I'm going to look away because it's really important that I don't see it, okay? Uh, sure. I don't have a monitor. I don't have a mirror over here. Don't worry. Okay, you better not be cheating. Yeah, I won't be. Okay, but I just want. Okay, so just call stop somewhere. Stop. Right there. You're yep. good with that. Yep. All right. See it. Yep. Okay. I'll close it. I'll shuffle it, and I'll just drop the deck. No sleight of hand. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I want this to be fair, but we're gonna make it more fair because, you know, I'm pretty good at sleight of hand. I've been doing this for a while, so maybe somehow I like controlled that card to a spot. Maybe it's like face up on the deck right now, and I'm just looking at it, right? Like, no, I'm kidding. But <laughs> the the point is, I want to create a new card, like a, like an image, like a mental image of a new card that only exists inside your head before I try to find what card you saw. Okay. okay. So here's what we're gonna do. First step, I'm gonna give you two roles to choose from. Okay, you can be the hero or the villain. The hero always tells the truth, the villain always lies. Pick one of those roles in your head right now. Done. Okay, the only rule that you have to follow now mm. is to stick with that role for the rest of this trick. So you're either always telling the truth or you're always lying. I don't know which one. Make sense? Okay, yep. Uh, so the only thing we're gonna keep consistent about the card that you saw is the color. That's it, everything else we're gonna change, okay? Right. So if it was a black card, your new card that you're creating in your head will be black if it was red. Red, okay? I'm gonna ask you two questions about the card. Answer in character, and they're gonna be very broad questions, so it's not gonna give me any info, and I don't know if you're lying to me, so it's fine. First question, was it a face card? Answer in character. Yes. Yes, okay. Next card, or next question. Actually, let, let's let you, you know, make up your mind a little bit here. So, you know the suit of the card you saw, right? Uh, yes, sir. I'm gonna let you change your mind to the other suit that's in that color if you want, okay? So decide, either change your mind to the other suit in that color or stay with the one you're on. Decide, you've made up your mind? Yeah. Okay, answer in character. Did you change your mind? Yes. Yes, okay. All right, that's all I'm gonna ask you. But now we gotta change the value, right? The value is the hardest part for me to guess. Right, so you have a suit. You have that suit, focus on that suit. That's the suit you're gonna stick with for this new card. But now we'll change the value. So let's say you picked uh, any number card, switch to any picture card, okay? And if you pick the picture card, switch to any number card, any one you want, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so now you've made up a new card, right? You got a new card yeah. with that suit that we came up with, and now you have the value. Yeah. Cool? There's no way I could know the card you're thinking of, the suit, the color. I don't know if you're lying, telling the truth, nothing. But now I'm going to try to predict, hopefully, that card. So yeah, I just... yeah. 
<laughs> you don't buy it, do you? I just want you to think about it. Think about that card here. Maybe this, okay. Remember, this card only exists in your head. I'm gonna leave the deck here. If you were here, I would give you the deck so I can't, you know, change my mind. But my prediction's locked in, okay? I'm gonna do this as fair as possible. Like I said, if you were here, you could actually do this part, but I obviously can't, so my prediction is locked in. The card that only exists in your head. You never touched it, Farhan, for the first time. What's that card that only exists in your head? Uh, Jack of Spades. The Jack of Spades. I put one card on the top of the deck, watch. Holy crap. <laughs> the thing is, bro, I switched from like the king, queen, and jack like four times. And I'm like, let the me jack, jack, bro. That's so cracked. Rub off. Right. So mind... All right, guys, so I hope you liked that performance of Mental Image. Now, let's get into the breakdown. There's a lot of things going on in this, most of it verbal. The card work is actually very simple, okay? There's not a whole lot that needs to happen. And that's one of the things that makes this effect feel like real mind reading and make it feel so good. You could still definitely consider this a card trick, but it definitely does fall in the mentalism section uh, of tricks as well. This is a fantastic mentalism effect, one that I use in my mentalism repertoire all the time. And it's nice because if you're not framing it as a card trick, you can totally pull it away from being a card trick with the scripting and, and almost um, point out how this isn't even really a card trick. It's not like any card trick they've ever seen. So let's get into it. First thing you're gonna need to do is force a card. Now, there's one thing you need to make sure about this card, and that is that it is not a face card. Any card that's not a face card will work. I also try to avoid aces just so there's no confusion when I mention picture cards and number cards later because the ace technically is not a number card but it's not a picture card either um, so I just avoid confusion. So all I would do is either have the spectator shuffle or I shuffle myself and as I'm squaring up the cards I would just peek the bottom card like this knowing it's the four of diamonds. Now this effect is great, it's a regular shuffle deck in use so you do not need any setup. So once you get the cards back from the spectator, you make your peak. Now we're gonna use a force. I would highly recommend you use my handling on the spread force, I will link that above. Uh, the classic force would also work very well in this case too, but I'm not a big fan of the classic force. Any force will work, but the main goal is to make this feel like the most freely selected card that there is absolutely no way that you could have seen. I did actually used to do this with a peak, uh, so I could make it maybe a little bit more fair, but then you'd have to deal with what happens if you did get a face card and I, it's not worth it. So go with a force. Um, so how my force would look is they'd go through and they'd touch any card they want, truly any card. Let's say they go with this one right here. I'm gonna turn my head away at this moment and they can see that card, the four of diamonds, right? And that's the force. The other thing you wanna keep in mind with the force, and this is why I recommend using the spread force. My second choice would probably be the riffle force if you are more comfortable with that, but you really want it to be, you know, only they see the card and no one else has a chance to see it. So with my spread force, as you come up, you have this nice moment where you're hiding the cards like this and your head is completely turned, right? And you show them that card that you say, you got it, you remember it, and then you instantly hand the deck out for a shuffle and that feels so fair. Up here, what that looks like is they come through, they call stop here, and I say, look, you remember that card? and give that a shuffle and I already know the identity. So it's so fair feeling. For me, the Riffle Force is a bit less fair than the Spread Force, so that's why I do recommend you learn that and use that force. Of course, any force will work, but there's a few things you need to keep in mind. Just make sure it feels extremely fair and that you know you have that nice moment where you can turn away and, and they're convinced that you have no idea and have never seen that card. So the reason the Riffle Force works so well is you can come through, go like this, and say you see that card, they'll see it, they'll remember it, and then you instantly close and hand out for a shuffle. Your head's turned away the whole time. You have that great body language where you're turning away and you don't see anything. So in that case, it's the same thing. You get the cards back, square up, peek the bottom card, cut and go into your riffle force and you know the identity. Now, the great thing about this effect is it actually does not take much memory at all. And when I used to do it, um, there were several things you had to remember and then I realized most of them you actually don't need to. And it's much more simple than that. So the only thing you actually need to remember about the card you forced is the suit. Okay, you do not need to know the value whatsoever. So you're gonna force a card, use the spread force, force it, so let's say in this case it's a diamond, you're gonna hand it to them and they're gonna shuffle. So now you know they're thinking of a diamond and that's all you need to know for this effect. That they're thinking of a diamond and that it's not a face card, of course. The scripting in this ex effect is extremely important because it can get a little confusing if you're not very clear with the scripting. So that is very important. So the first thing you wanna say is, I'm obviously a magician and you know that I can find your card. 
and you know I'm very good at sleight of hand there's no way I could know your card but maybe I was able to you know shift your card and, and get a little glimpse of it somehow you know because obviously I'm good at sleight of hand you know I'm good at sleight of hand so what we're gonna do is something extremely special we're gonna create a card that truly only exists inside your mind that no one could ever know so that's sort of the premise here and that's why if you're a mentalist this really gets it away from the cards, right? And it really makes it feel like a great mentalism effect. Now the rest of this is pretty much verbal except for the ending where we're gonna pick up the deck again for the final reveal. What you're gonna say after you set up the premise is to start, we need you to pick a role. There's the hero and the villain. The hero always tells the truth and the villain always lies. Now I'm only gonna ask you two very simple questions in a second and all I need you to do is answer in the role that you choose. So either you're either always lying or always telling the truth. So pick one now, but don't tell me what it is. Okay, so that's the scripting you use. Again, the scripting is very important in this effect to be as clear as possible. So go watch the performance, listen to this again, and really, you know, even write it down. I would recommend you write down the important lines to get that down. Once you've said that, they will think of a role, either the hero or the villain role. Now this is an idea I've seen from Peter Turner. I believe Kenton Nepper had some work on this hero, uh, villain, or truth teller, liar plot. It's a very common uh, mentalism plot. But we're taking this into card magic and using it as well to really help us get inside their head and know what they're thinking. So it's very, gonna be very, very neat. How this principle works is if we can figure out what role they are, the truth teller or the liar, without them knowing, we can actually move through the rest of the effect knowing exactly what they're thinking because we know if they're telling the truth or lying to us. But to them, if we don't know that, their answers are completely ambiguous, right? And they don't mean anything. So all we need to do is ask two questions and we will know not only if they're, tell if they're the truth teller or the liar, but we will know if they changed suits, okay? Now at the end of the video, I'll talk about some other variations on this if you choose, but I do think this is the best variation after having tried and tested this a lot. So now you're gonna say my first question, and remember to answer this in character, was your card a face card? And now they respond. So now the answer to this question will tell you if they're the truth teller, the hero, or the liar, the villain. I prefer to frame it as hero and villain because it gets away from the liar truth teller idea, but you can just say, you know, you're either gonna tell me the truth always or lie always, but I like the hero villain idea. So now that they've responded, you could compute and just think about it. If they said, no, their card is not a face card, then they're the truth teller because you know you didn't force them a face card. And if they say yes, then that it is a face card, you know that's impossible, you didn't force them a face card, you know they're the liar. But you actually don't need to think about any of this. There's a simple system that I will explain that you don't even need to do any thinking, it'll just tell you what the final suit is based on their yeses or their noes. So just remember if they said yes or no to that first question. So next what you're gonna say is, the only thing we're gonna keep the same about your card is the color, okay? So that's to say, if you pick the red card, your new card is gonna be red either hearts or diamonds, and if you pick the black card, your new card is gonna be black, either clubs or spades, okay? So that's the only thing that you're keeping the same. So now, you know as a performer, if we forced a club, then their card is either gonna be club or spades, their new card, and if we forced a heart, it's either gonna be hearts or diamonds. And that still feels obviously very fair. The suit is a small portion of, you know, guessing the card. It's one out of four. The value is what really matters here. But to them, anyway, you don't even know what the card originally was, so it doesn't matter. So you say, now we're gonna make a decision about the suit. Like I said, we're gonna keep the, the color the same. So I'm gonna let you change your mind to the other suit in the same color. So, if you saw a heart, you could switch to a diamond, or if you saw a club, you could switch to a spade, and vice versa, keeping them in the same color. But you don't have to. You can stay on the same suit, or you can switch to the other suit of that color. So it's your choice. So right now, make that decision in your mind. Do you wanna stay on the suit of the card you saw, or do you wanna switch to the other suit in that color? Go ahead and make that decision. They do. Now you say, the only other question I'm gonna ask you about your card, the very last question, and remember, answer this question in character, did you change your mind and switch to the other suit in that color? They will respond. Now, once again, if you know that they're the truth teller or the liar, you can now know based on their response which suit they're thinking of. But you don't need to process all that information. There is a very easy cheat code to figure it out. As long as you know the suit of the original card, you can now know exactly what suit they are thinking of. All you need to know is if they say no, no, or yes, yes. So if they say no to the first question, no to the second question, or yes to the first question, yes to the second question, they are on the same suit of the card that you forced them. If you get a no and a yes, or a yes and a no, they have switched suits to the other suit in that color. So for example, if I have forced hearts, and they say no, they are, did not see a face card, and no, 
they did not switch suits, then they are on hearts. And if you think about that, did they see a face card? No, means they are the truth teller. Now, if you say, did you switch suits? And they say, no, they're the truth teller, which means they are telling the truth, meaning they are still on hearts, right? Same thing, if it's yes, yes, you sort of get a double negative. So they're lying and then they're lying again about having switched, which means they're still on hearts. So yes, yes equals same suit. No, no also equals they're on the same suit as the force card. If you get any combination of no, yes, or yes, no, they have switched to the other suit in that color. So it's very easy. And all you need to know now is to bank the suit that they're thinking of. Just remember what suit they are now thinking of. Now the rest is completely really self-working. We're gonna use a sort of restricted without seeming restrictive type principle by Peter Turner or a reverse restriction essentially is something he would call it. It has a lot of different applications that Pete touches on. Go check out his work, it's fantastic. So that's a bit what we're gonna use here, but this is also what Ryan uh, used in the original effect. I think it works really, really well here. Um, so essentially what you're gonna say now that you've already, you know what the suit is, they don't know that you know, of course, you're gonna say, now of course the value would be the most difficult thing for me to guess about your card, right? So just keep that suit, just remember the suit that, you sel that you're on right now, but um, let's just focus on the value for a second. If you picked, let's say, a number card, switch to any picture card, and if you picked a picture card, switch to any number card you want. Okay, so they'll do that now, and what you now know, because you didn't force a picture card, you know they're now thinking of a picture card, either the jack, queen, or king. Once they have made their decision, you say, all right, um, now uh, take your suit, take your value, put them together, and create a mental image of that card in front of you. Print on the suit, print on the value, maybe what the middle of the card looks like, the colors, and see it very vivid and try to send that to me. And now you can hype up the performance as much as you want, because you are set. Now the great thing about this is you're mixing in a bit of forcing, a bit of mentalism techniques with a completely free choice at the end. So no matter what, they will always feel like this ending was a complete free choice and you'll often get, I was so close to picking queen, I was just about to pick jack, I changed my mind last second to king, whatever it is. No matter what, you're fine because we're gonna use a little bit of multiple outs here. Now to me, this is the best way to finish rather than fishing or trying to figure out what is going on here. Now, you know, there's several, several ways to use these multiple outs. You know, I have the Jack of Hearts tattooed here, so I could get the other two tattooed on me and use that. I could use something with my phone, tons of different things, but of course I'm just gonna show you the typical way I do this, which is with a deck of cards, because it's already here in front of you from the force, and it makes perfect sense. Now think about this. They picked a card, okay? They don't believe you have any idea what it is, but regardless, they make a completely new card in their mind that only exists in their mind. So how you do the multiple outs is very easy, okay? You know the suit of the card they're thinking of, and once again, that's all you need. You only need the suit, and you know they're thinking of one of the three court cards. So you're gonna go through and you're gonna say, all right, I'm gonna try to figure out what your card is. Just keep sending it to me. Now there's a couple ways to do this. I just do whatever one I see first. So let's say I know they're thinking of diamonds. So I'm gonna go through, and the first one I see here is the queen of diamonds. So I'm just gonna take that and move it to the, the bottom of the deck and then keep going through. Now you might choose to have an order in which you always do. Okay, the three outs are gonna be one on the bottom, one on top, and one flipped over in the middle of the deck. So you might always wanna put the queen flipped in the middle and the jack on the bottom and the king on top. I personally just go through and set it up in whatever order I see the cards and just remember that. But uh, I won't lie, that has you know messed me up one time at least. <laughs> So it uh, might not be the best, but that's usually what I choose to do. So choose whatever you would like to do, but I will show you now how to set that up. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go through towards yourself, and let's say they're thinking of diamonds here, right? So you're gonna go through, and the way I would do this is the first diamond I see, that is a court card, so the jack, I'm just gonna slip it on top. So as I'm going through, I just go like this, and I keep spreading. So from this side, what that looks like is I go through, I go through, I spot the jack, and I just keep going like that, right? And you can see that it's very nonchalant, but you're also reading them, so you're playing with them. You're saying, hmm, let me see, I'm not sure here. It's one of these, and just then I moved it to the top. So it's, you're just going like this, and then when you're ready, you just thumb it to the top, right? So you just come, push off that card, pull it on top, and you keep spreading. So that's how you get the first one set up. The next one, you're just gonna use a cull, right? So you're just gonna get to the king, cull it, and then push it onto the top of the deck, or you just close up, push it there, pause for a second, say, hmm, no, that's not it, and you keep going. So now you've set up, say, the king and the jack on top, and then for the last one, you're gonna come through, you're gonna find the card, and you're gonna pick up at that card, so the queen of diamonds, and you're gonna spread off the cards in your left hand. 
and you're gonna come like this and you're gonna say, hmm. And what you're gonna do is as you're gonna look the spectator in the eye and as you do that, you're gonna flip this hand palm down, grip this card with the thumb and pull away like this. Now having reversed that card on top and you close up everything and set it down. Now you might think that might look a little strange but with the right pattern and everything, it really does not. How it kind of ends up playing off, you're saying, hmm, let's see, look at me for a second, okay. No, and now right now I found it, so I say, okay, hmm, let me see here. Yeah, okay, I think I got it. And I kind of do it like that. I'll, I'll look them in the eye generally and do it. But even if they're burning my hands, they just see the hands come together like this, hmm not sure here and again I've reversed it on top so it's a very simple reversal you're not really even trying to hide anything though of course you don't want them to see that so that's why I generally will look them in the eye and I'll say hmm okay I, th I think I got it and I'll set the deck down now once you're set up you have one out on top one out on the bottom and one out face up in the middle now to me this is the best out where you can have them spread the deck like that second best is on top and the, the worst out is like this. You can also set those up in a specific way. If you think less people pick the king or the jack for a woman, you know, they're generally gonna pick the queen, so you can maybe do the queen always face up, but again, I just kind of do it different every performance and I just remember where I put them all. And a few tips, you know, as you're doing this, just, you know, say, hmm, look at me, pause, look them in the eye, you know, ask them to think of the color, try to send it to me, and you keep going through as you're doing your setup, right? And you just, you make conversation, you, you don't make this feel like a dull moment, make it feel like you're actually doing something. Okay, send me the color, put the card on top, keep going. So let me show you at speed quickly what it might look like for spades, how it would actually look in a normal performance. So I'll say, hmm, think of your card for me. Mm, okay, no, none of these. Hmm, okay, focus on the color. Yeah, the color, okay, send that, send that. Uh, hmm, okay, hold on. Uh, let's see, I think I've got it, look at me for a second. Yeah, okay, I've got it, I've got it. Now obviously, in the real thing, you would see my eyes, you wouldn't be looking at my hands the whole time, but I wanted to give you guys sort of what's going on with the hands and my voice as I do this. Obviously, I'm making eye contact a lot of the time, getting their eyes up. Now what you do is you take the deck and you set it in their hands and they hold on to the deck just like this. So you say, give me your hand, place the deck in, take their other hand, put it on top. Now you say, I want you to really focus on that card. I've locked in my prediction. I'm not going to touch the deck again. And that's very important because people might be hesitant. If you said you were going to, you know, tell them what their card is without them saying it, why are you having them say it? So you need to say, you know, I've locked in my prediction. There's no way I can change it. You're holding on to it, right? And then they'll, you know, feel that it's okay to uh, reveal it. So you say, for the first time, what is the card you are thinking of? Now they will tell you the king, queen, or jack of, in this case, spades. Now you just say, whatever your out is. You either say flip the deck over and they will flip it over and be amazed. You say flip over the top card, they will be amazed. Or you say spread the deck in your hands and they will be amazed. So that is mental image guys. It is a amazing effect. I'm telling you, you gotta try this out. Just please make sure you practice that scripting, you know? Uh, figure out exactly how you wanna stack the cards, um, those sort of things. But that is to me the best way to do this effect. It absolutely kills. It's fairly streamlined. Uh, it doesn't get too confusing if you follow the right pattern. Anytime, anywhere, regular shuffle deck, and it is absolutely amazing. All right, so let's jump into some other uses and ideas on this effect. I want to talk to you quickly about a few little things that I've, you know, I've ran into, little problems that uh, you might run into and how to solve them. One is when you say, you know, switch between any, if you're thinking of a number card, switch to any picture card. If you're thinking of a picture card, switch to any number card. Sometimes people aren't familiar with picture card. They know face card, so just be wary that if someone looks confused, that might be why. Another thing you'll get is, do I have to change when you say that? And of course, you know the value of the card they selected, so you, they don't need to change, but it kind of totally ruins the effect. So all you need to say is, you know, reiterate what you said at the beginning. You know, well, I actually, you know, I handled those cards. You touched that card. So maybe there's a way I could know the value. If you switch, it truly only exists in your mind. So please switch, right? And that will, of course, get them to switch because it's, it's way more fair. Another little idea, you could do this with any suit. You could add a third question into the mix where you have them first change colors if they want to switch from a black card to a red card after you've asked them if it's a face card. So now you know if they are a liar or a truth teller, then you would say, uh, now you can switch between it black or red, so change your mind if you want, and then you would ask, did you change your mind on the color? Okay, now that you know if they're thinking of a black or a red card, and now you say, think of either one of those suits, you know, spades and clubs, or hearts or diamonds, they will, and then you say, did you go for hearts? 
and they'll answer yes or no, or did you go for spades, and they'll answer yes or no, and now you know if it's spades or clubs, or hearts or diamonds. So you could do it with any suit, and then go into the uh, picture card force. But personally, I think that extra question adds a little bit too much confusion, and is really not necessary for the effect, and it's much more streamlined than this handling, but just an idea for you to use. And the last thing I wanna to talk to you about is a different way to do the multiple outs with the deck, something that Ryan actually does in his trick, which is using this Joker out, which is kind of fun, and it avoids you having to do the reversal, even though the reversal, I think, is the best out, so that's why I always use it, but some people may not like having to do this in performance, but I'm telling you, uh, it's it's so, I mean, it's so, there's nothing to see here, right? Like, it's so subtle. I even pause while I do this. I'll say, hmm, think about it for me. And it doesn't look like anything happens, yet I reverse that card. So now this time what you do, you go through, and the first one you see, you say, oh, I forgot to take the Joker out of this deck, and you just throw it down on the table, off to the side, completely out of play. You just say, you know, oh, I, oops, I forgot to take the Joker out. We don't need any Jokers for this. You're not thinking of a Joker, are you? No, okay, good. And then you keep going through, and now you do the regular setup. You take one to the bottom, and the last one you get to now just goes on top, all right? And you set the deck down, you say, all right, I have my prediction set. For the first time, what was your card? Now, if they say the card that's on top, reveal the same. If it's on bottom, the same. But now the third out is that joker that you threw away. So if they say that out, which to me is probably the best out in this case, you say, all right, you remember that one joker I threw over there? and you just kind of look at it, snap your fingers, and it changes into the card they named. So that's a nice little out. Um, and then of course, if they don't name that, uh, once you've done one of the other reveals, you later would just pick up the Joker, supposedly, and put it back in the deck. Not my preferred handling, but another great handling still. So guys, that is it for me on Mental Image. That is, wow, I can't believe I actually finally put this tutorial together. It feels uh, pretty crazy to be teaching this effect. I, I didn't know when I would ever teach this. Man, it feels good. I hope you guys love this as much as I do and you get as much mileage as I have out of it. It's uh, so strong, so powerful. Um, I'd love to hear if you, you know, have performed this effect, you know, leave me a comment, come back, maybe send me an email, let me know how it goes. You know, if what you even think about this, if you like it, that sort of thing, because uh, it is absolutely awesome. And you can see from the beginning of the videos, the incredible reactions I get every single time I do this effect because it's just so good. So I just want to thank you guys again for all the new subscribers. Finally, you know, hitting new milestones has been great. With all that said, guys, please don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video.